Hello everyone, and welcome to the fourth video in this Welcome Windows series. There will definitely be more videos in the Build It series, but this is probably the last one that we're going to have covering the Welcome Window. It's not going to be the perfect implementation, but what I really want to cover in this particular tutorial is how we can bundle up the code that we've mostly already written and create a framework out of that so that we can then use that framework in a, another application. We're going to create a document-based application so that we can call into this uh, welcome window framework, present the window with essentially the customization of that document-based app, right? So, so far we've only done this, all this code's only been written, written, written in this welcome window application thing that we've done, but essentially we want to figure out a way that we can make it a framework so that we could package it up and reuse it in any kind of, you know, maybe document-based app that any developer might want to inject their own information, right? Maybe their own app icon, welcome to my app, right? That kind of thing. So with that said, um, there's a few customizations that I've gone ahead and done. These will all be on GitHub as a sort of temporary step between these lessons. So you can just kind of check out that commit if you want to start at uh, this particular place. There's really not that many changes though that I've done. I've gone ahead and added uh, two files. One is the uh, an extension for bundle and we'll be covering a bunch of these sort of properties in a bit, but they're just different ways I can access particular things in a particular bundle. And then uh, the other thing that I've gone ahead and created is this default um, struct, and it's just a wrapper around user defaults. It's really nothing special, but we've gone ahead and implemented in the main welcome view controller, there's now a uh, implementation for that uh, checkbox at the bottom. So. I've gone ahead and implemented basically the fun functionality so that when I click on this, this checkbox button, right, it will trigger a user default to say that it's false if it's off, uh, true if it's on. And in those scenarios, um, there's a different kind of show method. So there's a show window uh, and a force flag. So you can either force the window to be open, or if this is false, it will just check the user default to see whether um, it should open the window or not. You, maybe there's better naming for this kind of thing, but anyway, that's where it is and um, that's what we've gone ahead and done. So not too many changes from the last video, but there's a few different files and we'll cover uh, we'll co cover that bundle one in just a bit. All right, so like I said, we want to be able to package up all these files into a framework. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we wanna select our Xcode project and under the targets, this little plus button at the bottom, we wanna click on that. And under Mac OS, we'll search for framework and we'll click on framework. We're going to call this the welcome framework and we will just hit return. And now uh, we want to basically add the files into uh, this target. So we want to select everything, basically any, any file that we really created ourselves. So the welcome window controller, we want to add in there and everything from here to there. Uh, so everything from the welcome window controller to the assets.xc assets uh, we want to include in our framework. We don't need the main menu nib, the info plist, the entitlements, or the app delegate. Those are all specific things to the welcome window app, right, that we've been building all this stuff so far out of. But all these guys here we want to now move over into the welcome window. And so to do that on the sidebar over here on the right, under the first option for target membership, we want to check this checkbox to add all those files to the welcome framework. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, we can create our another application, which is going to be a document based app. So let's go ahead back to our Xcode project. We're going to hit the plus button and we want an application. Uh, so I'm just going to search for app. Uh, we want a document app. Again, this is under Mac OS, document app. We'll hit return. It is going to be nib-based. Uh, we're going to have an app kit app delegate, and the language is Swift. Uh, and this is just going to be document app. All right, and we're going to go ahead and hit return on that. All right, so now we have a document-based app. Before we try to bring in the welcome window into this, let's just go ahead and test out this application. So we're going to go to document app. And I'm going to stop that. Hit run under document app as your as your selected scheme. And this will build itself. And you can see that this appears under the project, right? So here we have the welcome uh, framework and we also have uh, the document app, right? So we have all the different 
uh, content over here on the left. And so uh, the document app is the thing we just created. So the document app obviously right now has nothing really associated with it. And uh, there's really nothing going on here. We want to actually have the ability to save files. So let's go ahead and implement that. We're not really going to save anything particular, but if we go to the document.swift file under our document app, we can fix this up pretty easily by just not throwing an error when we try to read data. And then, uh, sorry, down here when we try to read data. And then uh, here, we're just going to return a fake data blob. So we're not actually saving any kind of information right now. But uh, we can go ahead and test this just to make sure that we can save a document and open one up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, test doc. I'm going to save that to documents. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to file, open recents, test doc. And we can see that it opens just fine, right? So for the purpose of our tutorial, this is good enough for our document-based application. All right, so now that we have that, the question comes, how do we actually show the welcome window? So um, we want to basically import our welcome window and we're going to do welcome framework here. So if we import welcome framework in our application did finish launching, we want to be able to show the welcome window. And so to do that, we want to actually be able to uh, create a welcome window controller and try to access. That. Now we're going to have an issue when we try to actually uh, run this application because the welcome framework itself has not actually been added to the document app yet. So let's go to our welcome window and under the document app as the target, we want to add the welcome framework to this document app. From there, we can go back to document app and we should be able to build now successfully. Wait for this to complete. Um, so there we go, build succeeded and what we want to do now is we want to try and create that window controller for the welcome window. So I'm just going to call it window controller for brevity. Welcome window controller. And we can see that we're not really getting much help here. And that's because the framework itself is not actually exposing any of these classes. So the welcome window controller is not in scope. And that's because it is really internal to that framework. And we need to mark it explicitly as public if we want to expose it outside of this framework. So we want to uh, mark this as public. And anything that overrides uh, uh, basically an existing NS window controller class also needs to be uh, public as well. This initializer is going to be public. And we want to mark this call as public as well because it needs to be, uh, it's also from NS window controller. All right, let's go back to our app delegate for the document app, and we should be able to uh, set this up now. There we go. Let's go and uh, try to show the window, and we'll see if we can successfully do this now. So we'll run this. And so uh, you'll notice that we get a document, <laughs> but we don't get the welcome window controller. Now, why is that? Well, if we take a look at the console here, we'll actually see that there's a pretty clear indication why that's the case. And it's because we're trying to, as it says, cannot load the nib name welcome framework dot main welcome view controller in the bundle null. Now, this occurs because we're launching from the document app and the document app has its own bundle, which is considered the main bundle. However, the framework can try and load things from the main bundle, even though its content is not located in the main bundle, right? So it'll it'll try by default just to load whatever thing it tries to load from the main bundle, but that's not what we wanna do. Once it becomes a framework, we need to explicitly say that it needs to load from the framework bundle itself. So that's where this bundle extensions things come in, uh, where we I'm just extending bundle, and I have this framework uh, property here, uh, that is simply going to uh, initialize a bundle or define a bundle with the identifier matching this framework. And this identifier is the same one that is located here. So if I click on welcome framework, it is this bundle identifier. So if you are making this at home, you want to make sure that you're defining your appropriate bundle identifier like that. So I've gone ahead and defined this as framework. And so what we need to do is go into our main welcome view controller here. 
and there is no defined initializer and so we're going to actually have to create one because it's using the default initializer behavior of NS view controller right now but we're going to explicitly need to create an initializer that will do the thing that we want so here we'll make a public init and let's just jump over to NS view controller here so that we can see uh, what this initializer is because Xcode is usually not very helpful with setting that kind of thing up so the initializer is going to look like this and we uh, can set this up similarly to how we set up the welcome window controller one so in welcome window controller we have this thing where we take the NS nim name describing ourself and here by default this value is going to be nil now this is where the problem occurs. Nil is going to default to main as the bundle. So we really want this to be the framework bundle that we defined in that bundle extensions file. All right, let's see what else uh, we have a problem with here. So uh, cannot delegate to self to init. Uh, this should go to super. All right, and then let's implement this required thing here. And I'm just going to mark it as unavailable. All right. Uh, let's make sure that this works. All right, great. We compiled it and we'll try to run it again. And we're going to continue the fun process of debugging what is wrong with my framework. So here we can see that uh, recent table view controller is also running into the same problem. So let's go ahead and fix that up. Let's go to the recent table view controller because uh, it, it, it already has its own uh, initializer here. We're just going to change that bundle to be the framework one. All right, let's continue this game of debugging our problems. Uh, here now we're loading the file table cell view in a bundle, and that is going to end up being nil. Now, what is going wrong in this particular scenario is a little bit trickier. So um, in the recents table view, right, that's where our file table cell view is located. So here, when we go to register it, we add it to this uh, nsnib bundle, right? And this bundle here is also going to default to the main bundle. So we need to flip that over to framework. All right, let's see how this goes. So ta-da, we actually got our application to appear, <laughs> our window to appear, and everything looks pretty good, right? It seems to be doing about the correct thing, right? All right, so now uh, we are on our way to kind of polishing this up a little bit. So and the next thing is we want to kind of change how uh, this recent documents controller is going to work, right? So there's two different ways we can do this. We can either just implicitly assume that this is going to be a document-based app. Probably not really the best approach, but it is the easiest, and so that's what I'm going to do in this tutorial. But another way would be to inject it, and we'll talk about uh, how we can inject some values later on. But uh, right now, the recent table view controller is created in our welcome window controller. And we're passing just this uh, made up URL that I have here at the moment. What I want to do is change this so that I'm going to just base it off of the, the current document uh, URLs, basically. And to do that, we have to say ns-document-controller.shared.recent-document-urls. So what this is going to do is it's going to access whatever the, the shared NS document controller is, which is always just one instance per running application. And so in our document-based application, it's going to be whatever the recent URLs are of that application. The downside to this approach is that if you don't have a document-based application, then we're probably pulling in the wrong information, right? So there is that downside to this particular way of doing it. Let's see what happens if I go ahead and run this. Uh, we can see that perfect i get this test document right here right which is that document that i uh, recently opened right it's this guy right here and it shows me the path to where that document is located so it actually works correctly right um, which is awesome now um, the one thing that we want to change here is that we can't actually open the document and again this is where um, the, the the balance comes in on do we want to allow configuration for this or do we want to make it explicit i would argue that you probably want to make a configuration for this so that uh, basically the idea right is that if i uh, am going to double click on this right what is going to happen and i would suggest that you make this customizable so that the user could do anything that they wanted based off of that however i'm being lazy in this scenario and i just want to just kind of get something working so i'm just going to use that shared instance again open a document 
Um, I want this version, so it allows me to open something with a new URL. I'm going to get the selected row, and yes, I want to display. Uh, do I need this whole thing? I'm not sure, but um, let me just check out this. Well, whatever. We'll run that. Uh, we want to display it, and uh, we want to do that. Let's see what this problem is. Uh, sorry, it should be URLs. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and run. I guess this is not a needs to be implemented. What are we missing here? Yeah. All right, maybe that'll work. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now we have that implemented. And when I double click on this, it's actually going to present the document uh, using that, that call that we have here, right? So again, I would argue that you probably want to make this customizable so that the user who's using this API could actually inject this behavior in rather than just assume that it's an NS document based app and you're going to open it standardly, right? Uh, maybe they want to do something totally custom when they do this. So I would argue that uh, you probably should have a callback in this kind of scenario, but um, we can see that it works. So I can close this document, I can open it and we get the document to appear. So that's pretty neat. All right, let's go ahead and quit this uh, again. Now, uh, one other thing that we want to do is we want to basically kind of repeat the Xcode behavior of uh, this as well. So in Xcode, when you have an existing document already uh, up, uh, so for example, if I have this test document and I quit with the windows being open and then I relaunch the application, the expectation would be that this welcome window doesn't appear, right? The welcome window only appears in sort of two scenarios with Xcode. Well, there's a bunch of different scenarios, but uh, the main things is that if there's already a document that it's opening, then it's not going to actually um, open that document, right? So if um, if test document here is already visible, let me make sure that that actually works. Uh, run this again. Right, so there's uh, the test document and uh, but my welcome window is actually still appearing when I, when I run this, right? So the idea here is we just want only if, if there is no documents available, we wanna show the welcome window. And we're gonna also do another thing where if we click on the application icon and there's nothing open, then we will show this welcome window as well. Again, this is kind of up to you behavior, but I just wanna show you some approaches you can take to doing that. So let's go over to our app uh, delegate here in the document, uh, when, or our <laughs> document app. And um, I'm not 100% sure on if this is the correct or the best way to do this, but the way that I found works seemingly pretty well is to uh, basically have a NS document controller subclass that tells me whether I've opened a document or not. And it basically will be the truth of whether there's already been a document opened or if we're opening one, etc. So how do we do that? Well, we we'll go ahead and create a new class here. It's going to be a subclass of Dennis NS document controller. I'm just going to call it document controller. Like so we'll add this into the document app and there's two calls that I want to override. So one of them is, um, well, let's see if I can remember all the things for this. So open document, uh, we want to override this guy and, uh, this is pretty simple. I'm just going to call super on this. So open document, with contents of URL, display, oops, display document, and completion handler. All right. And then the other one is when we're reopening a document. And this occurs when basically the application is relaunching itself and it's restoring a document that was already uh, previously open. And again, I'm just going to call the uh, super implementation of both of these. I'll explain why in just a second. Um, display document completion. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to add basically a little variable here. That's going to just tell me whether or not I have opened a document. So I'm just going to say has opened document and it's going to start out as false. And then if any one of these guys occurs, I'm going to set this to be true. Kind of a weird thing, but, um, it seems to work pretty well and I don't know, maybe there's a better approach. And if you do, please leave that approach in the comments below. All right. Uh, now that we've done that, let's go back to our app delegate 
And NS document controller is a little weird because it's a singleton, but there is a documented way of actually overriding the singleton. And it's kind of funky, but uh, we can basically an application will finish launching, not did, it's very specific. Uh, in will finish launching, all you have to do is instantiate that document controller. You don't do anything else, you don't assign it to anything, you just instantiate the document controller. And by default, the first document controller to be initialized will become the shared instance. So uh, it's a little be a little bizarre of behavior, but it is how it works. Um, so I'm just gonna make a convenient little thing here. And this is just going to return um, and it's document controller dot shared instance. And I'm gonna just force it to be the document controller because in this scenario, I know that it's going to be my document controller. All right, so what can I do with this nice behavior now? Well, uh, basically I can just say, uh, if I uh, if my document controller has opened a document, and in this case I want it to be if I have not opened a document, then I'm just going to show the window. So let's go ahead and try and run this and see what we get out of it. So here we go, we can see that we have our test document, and if I look for other windows, there's, there's no other windows available, right? So I can I can see that there's nothing else, which is awesome, that's what I want. If I close this window and I quit the application and then I relaunch the app, we can see that uh, now I actually get a document or uh, the welcome window appears. We actually get this untitled document, which is actually something we don't want to have happen. So let's fix that as well. And it's very easy to do. We just have to implement a application uh, delegate callback, which is the application should open untitled file. And we simply want to tell it to not do that. All right, let's rerun it. And we can see here that now we only get the welcome window. There's nothing else uh, that shows up, which is great. That's what we want. We can open up the test document. And uh, if I leave this open and I quit with this document appearing, I try to open it again. There we can see that the only the document opens and now the welcome window does not appear, which is the behavior that we want. The last thing that I'm going to show is uh, how we can get this to happen uh, or show the welcome window uh, when we uh, basically don't have any window visible. And then I click on this uh, icon down here. There's one other callback that we can implement for this is the application uh, should handle reopen. And there's a flag for if there is a visible window. So basically we want to say if there is no visible window, then we want to open the, the window controller. So show window. And in this case, we want to force it all the time, regardless of the, um, the, the checkbox on the window itself. So regardless of whether you say show at launch, right? If we click on the application, we always want it to appear. All right, so here, let's go ahead and run this. We can see that the window appears, which is fine. That's um, you know what we wanted. But if we close it and we click on the document app, we can see that it launches our welcome window again. All right, that's great. Now this is uh, a lot of progress. The very last thing I want to show though is how to do customization with uh, the, the, this in particular. So how do we want to go about customizing this? And I'm not really going to do a whole lot around this. I just want to give you an idea because I know this video is already going to be running long. Um, in this particular scenario, we, we basically want to allow some kind of injection into the welcome window controller, right? So the approach that I would recommend is let's go ahead and create a new file here. It's going to make a new Swift file and we're going to make a welcome configuration file. All right, uh, let's make sure that's on the welcome framework target. All right, so uh, we're gonna make a struct, call it welcome configuration. And this welcome configuration is basically just going to define all the different types of values that we might wanna have. So some of them that I'm gonna define are the image icon for, um, oops, let me change this to app kit. Uh, the image icon for the, the actual app. Uh, we might want to define the title, and this will be a string. We might want to define the subtitle, and that will be 
another string, right? So what I'm referring to in this scenario is uh, if I want to change this icon, if I want to change this title, if I want to change this, right? Ultimately, we'd probably want to be able to customize oh, almost everything in this view. And so we need something that's going to allow us to show that information. All right, so let's call this welcome configuration. And in the welcome window controller, I'm going to uh, make a change here so that we're going to have a, a configuration. So we'll call this welcome configuration. And um, let's go ahead and just say that uh, we have a variable here, which is a configuration, welcome configuration. All right, and I'm gonna make sort of a, a default setup for this as well. So um, we're gonna just say, um, what do I wanna say for this? We basically wanna have a static function here, and this is just gonna be my default configuration. And this just allows me to kind of set up one of these uh, in a nice kind of way, right? We we don't have to have a default configuration, but maybe it just helps the user. And I wanna show you some different ways that you could actually set up a default that um, looks pretty good without actually having the user to enter every little piece of detail uh, that they want manually. So uh, what can we do for this? Well, um, we could go ahead and create a welcome configuration. And uh, let's talk about how we can create each one of these things. So knowing that we can create uh, a few of these, I've gone ahead and created these uh, shortcuts here on my bundle extension, which is going to pull out the bundle icon name. Uh, well, it's going to create an image out of that. It's going to create the app, get the app name. It's going to get the version information all out of the bundle, right? And to do that, we just have to access the main bundle to get all this, these, these good things. So let's go back to our default configuration. I'm just gonna say main, um, let's get bundle.main. And now I'm just gonna pull out the uh, main icon, the main uh, app name, and the main um, version, right? So this is just a sort of nice way that we can uh, conveniently configure all this stuff for ourselves here. All right, um, so now that we've gone ahead and done that, um, there's one other little thing that I wanna do, which is throw in uh, some app icons for this. So go over to my document app. I'm going to put in an app icon like this. Uh, let's fix this up. All right, so now um, if our, let me just make sure my app icon is actually correct there, good. Let's go back to uh, wherever I was two seconds ago. So my welcome configuration, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the main bundle and select all these different things out, and this will be our default configuration. And when I do this on our welcome window controller, I'm just gonna make the default to be our um, default configuration, right? Um, so that's what's there. I'm just gonna also do that here as well, all right? All right, so now when we have this configuration, um, we'll just go ahead and actually I'll just make this explicit so that they have to put something in. We will uh, go ahead and set up the configuration. So let's just say self.configuration, that's configuration. So the last thing we have to fix is to make this welcome configuration public so that people can actually see this thing in the initializer. And that should be enough. So let's go ahead and run this here. Um, now I also need to pass this configuration along. So in our document app, uh, we're going to make a configuration and we will make the default configuration and let's see what the outcome of that is. And before we do that, we want to actually change the contents in our main view controller here. So in setup call, uh, basically we want to be able to pass along this uh, this information as well. So we'll have our um, configuration, configuration, welcome configuration. And because this is not a convenience initializer, we want to set this up beforehand. So let's do this and we'll have a property here for the configuration. All right, so let's go to our uh, main welcome window here. We'll add those properties in. So let's go ahead and add in our, 
I'll just put this down below here. So let's add in our uh, image view. We'll add in our title view, title label, and then we'll add in our, I wish this would be less than subtitle label. All right, let's go back to our main welcome window controller here. And we will finally set up the last thing. So image view dot image. We'll take the configurations image, the title label dot uh, string value is going to be the configuration title. And then the subtitle label string value will be the configuration subtitle. All right. And lastly, I need to make sure that I actually pass this configuration in on our welcome window. So uh, here we want to pass this configuration along and let's see what we get. All right, so there we go. We have our application. It has the, um, the icon from our main uh, application, it has the name of the application, and it has the version of the application as well. So this is sort of a way that we can sort of conveniently um, I guess set up some of the values for the user so that they don't actually have to pull all these out in their own code but obviously we can still allow the user to customize them as they see fit so in the document app right they can make their own configuration uh, depending on what they want right we could actually change all these uh, to var2 if we want right and they could start with a default configuration and then if there's anything they want to change out of that default configuration they can just manually set those values so Beyond this, we'd probably want to allow some customization, customization for the uh, buttons, perhaps for the checkbox along the bottom right, but you can pull a lot of these things out of uh, the main bundle and you can make some reasonable defaults for the user, right? I could say welcome to app name instead of just app name, for example, right? So anyway, I hope this covers a lot of the things. There's a lot of various uh, you know, troubleshooting things in this video, but I hope that wraps up the main ideas, right? We have our welcome framework, which we select all the files that we want to be contained in that. Anything that needs to be exposed outside of that framework needs to be marked as public. And then in the uh, within the framework itself, we need to make sure that we're not just going to default to the main bundle if it's a particular resource within the framework, right? We need a framework bundle that has the identifier of the framework, and we need to reference that if we're going to reference things within the bundle or within the framework. And then uh, from there, we can just embed this framework inside of any application, and it can now customize a lot of the functionality of this uh, window. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll see you in another video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.